Hello and welcome uh, everyone to this um, week's afternoon session now. Today we are going to have another session uh, with uh, Dr. Anjana Sinha, who is a mathematical physicist by profession. However, she has got another side of, um, and which is more about painting and drawing. Uh, if you have not watched the Wally video, Wally painting video before, I would definitely recommend you going back and understand, you know, going back to that video, which is on our website, or on our YouTube channel, to go and see, um, because it's a very interesting session. And if you are unsure about worldly art or if you think that you can't paint, I think that session is going to give you more confidence. So today she is with us to more, talk more about the mandalas and uh, how and why we do mandalas or how actually mandalas and, and dot mandalas can have an impact on our mental wellness. So let me invite um, Dr. Sinha to our studio. Hello, a very warm welcome to you. How are you today? Thank you so much. And a very good afternoon, very good evening to all our viewers. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. It's been a pleasure. You know, since you have done the Wally, um, the painting uh, session with us, we have received lots of requests, actually. And we have seen, and I have got a surprise for you as well, you know. So I've been, uh, I've been trying to be a good student and I have done something for you, which I'm going to actually show you. Uh, of course, it will be my pleasure to see. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Um, but what are we doing today? So what is it? And uh, if you if you talk us through a little bit around the mandalas and, and I know you have sent me the presentation. Um, so would you like to go into the presentation first or would you like to talk us a little bit about uh, you at the beginning? Uh, if people have not uh, the video. I think let's start with the presentation. Let's start with the presentation then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, uh, first, let me tell you that I'm no expert in mental health. And today's program is related to mental health issues. I can only share with you my personal experiences of how these art forms uh, help me in tidying over my anxieties or depression or whatever, so sad, sorrow states and all that. Uh, first, let me thank Sangeet Foundation and Manav Utsav. Special thanks to Dr. Indrani Lahiri and Joint Ray. Uh, the last one and a half years, all of us have gone, have been going and are still going through a very peculiar time. Uh, many people have lost their jobs. Many people have lost their dear ones. They have fallen ill. The social distancing, there is no, emo uh, people are suffering from emotional problems and everything feeling very low. So I think uh, today's uh, program uh, might help people in uplifting their moods. I hope so, though I'm no expert in mental health. So today I'll be talking about mandala and dot mandala paintings and uh, well, uh, let's go to the next slide and then <laughs> we can discuss. So the topics to be covered today are basically, I shall introduce the two art forms, the mandala art, which is shown in black and white, and the dot mandala art, which is shown in colored here. We shall discuss about the origin, the place from where these started, when, which point of time they, these arts came into existence and how they spread to the other parts of the world. Then I shall briefly say a few words how mandala art therapy is related to stress relief. Only what I know, but I know very little, I tell you again. And then we shall see how to create these mandalas and dot mandalas, very simple ones. Of course, we'll be 
conducting most probably we'll be conducting uh, workshops uh, in the next one or two months and those who are interested can please get in touch with Indrani or Jayanto. And finally, we shall show some examples. So next slide, please. And see the slide. Hello. Yeah. Now, Sorry, what a is a mandala? Yeah. Sorry for the uh, disruption. What is a mandala? Actually, it comes from the Sanskrit word mandal, which means a circle. So these mandalas represent the wholeness of life, the harmony that exists among living beings and the world in which we all live. And it represents the infinite nature of the universe. So actually, concentric circles are drawn and the space in between these circles is filled up with repetitive patterns. And the drawing uh, starts from the center and it radiates outwards. So next slide, please. Yeah. Now you can see the concentric circles. I have drawn two concentric circles and I have divided into eight equal parts. Now, this is very important because the mandalas are highly symmetric. They are very, very precise. The geometry is very precise and it is actually a spiritual and ritual symbol in Buddhism and Hinduism representing the universe. And why circular? Because life never ends. Everything is connected. So these mandals or mandalas are circular in shape. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So how did they come into existence? Well, mandalas existed or started with Buddhism, that is in the 6th century BC, so more than 2,500 years ago. Buddhist monks used to sit cross-legged on the floor and they used to have this cloth on their lap and they used to draw the mandalas. And then they carried them with them, carried these mandalas with them wherever they went. China, Japan, Tibet, so slowly, so the mandala spread to the eastern part of the world. How they spread to the western part, I'll come to it later. And slowly mandala spread to Hinduism as well. And it is believed that as one enters a mandala from outside and goes towards the center, the suffering decreases and the life changes into one of joy and happiness. So next slide, please. Yeah. Now, there are three main types of mandalas, teaching, healing, and sand. The black and white one on the top, that is a teaching mandala, which is very symbolic. Each shape, line, Color represents a different aspect of a philosophical or religious system. Then healing mandala is the one shown in the center with the Om written inside. It is more intuitive than teaching mandalas and it is made for the purpose of meditation to evoke feelings of calmness and focus on concentration. And finally, we have sand mandalas, which is the bottom uh, figure, where the Buddhist monks used to create intricate patterns 
using colored sand. It's very interesting. I found, I particularly personally found this concept very interesting. They used to take weeks to create sand mandalas. And shortly after completion, they would destroy it. Just to prove, just to emphasize that nothing is permanent. Well, I find this concept really very, very interesting. Because I personally feel, of course, the mental experts will tell you uh, better. And of course, they are the experts who will tell you about this. But I personally feel that all our anxieties and fears arise because we are very afraid to change. We just cannot take the change. We can, just cannot accept change if it is not according to our own will. So this concept is very interesting. So it, the mental well-being is naturally embedded here in these sand mandalas. Well, but I am not going into any religious aspect. Uh, I'm just, uh, I can only share my feelings and how to draw these figures. So next, please. Yeah. What is the modern view? So far, whatever I have said, it was about Buddhism and all those things 2000 to 2500 years ago. The modern view is that it's a diagram, it's a chart, a very, very precise, symmetric, geometric pattern. The figure shown here is one fourth of a mandala, one quadrant of a circle. And how is it important in today's world? It is believed to reduce stress, anxiety, tension. It is believed to enhance concentration, stimulate creativity, release emotional blockages, heal dementia and fatigue. It helps decreasing trauma in people with post-traumatic uh, syndrome post-traumatic stress disorder, and it's even thought to help people with seasonal affective disorder. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So in uh, how did this come into the Western world? In the early 1900s, the famous psychoanalyst Carl Jung introduced mandala to the Western world. He believed that creating mandalas enable patients to unlock their unconscious thoughts, dreams, and desires, thus helping to resolve past trauma and current conflicts. So here you can see that, okay, okay, fine. Uh, in art therapy, therapists invite the client to create a mandala that represents his or her feelings at that particular point of time. So the psychologists know how to interpret these drawings. And this practice is found to be very powerful in soothing the mind and contain negative emotions such as fear, anxiety, or anger. As for my personal uh, experience. My dad passed away last year in the middle of the pandemic and India was uh, under a very, very strict lockdown at that time. There was no conveyance. I just couldn't visit him when he was ailing, nor could I visit my mom after my dad passed away. But I think by practicing these figures, these diagrams, I was able to maintain my calm and maintain my functionality. At least that's what that's the feedback I got from my own family. So next, please. Yeah, actually drawing repetitive patterns soothes the mind. We have zentangles. We are very well acquainted with zentangles. But there's a difference between zentangle and mandala. Zentangles are always drawn with black ink on white paper, but mandalas can be uh, black and white or colored. Then zentangles are abstract repetitive patterns and mandala has its origin in religious 
in, in religion. And this symmetry part, it's extremely important in a mandala, but a Zen tangle does not need this circular symmetry. And doodling is totally different. It is not a rep repetitive pattern. It's a thoughtless scribbling on paper. I think all of us have done this in our school lives, in our student days, when some boring class is going on and <laughs> we are doodling in our notebooks. Uh, so let's go on to mandala now. Uh, yeah, so these are very simple black and white mandalas. I think if you look at it closely, you can see how symmetric the patterns are. And then the next slide will show colored mandalas. Next slide, please. Yeah, so these are colored mandalas. Coloring is found to reduce the stress levels further and fight anxiety and depression in a better way. So coloring mandalas give us a very soothing effect. Uh, next slide, please. Well, coloring actually, we attribute certain emotions with certain colors like red. Red is for anger, passion, strength, power. Then pink. Pink is very soft, feminine qualities, love, respect. Then orange and yellow. These are very bright colors. So these represent, when a child is very happy, you ask the child to start coloring. It's very uh most probably he'll pick up a yellow or a or an orange crayon or something so yellow and orange are for laughter happiness creativity fun optimism when a person is very sad gray will attract him or her then green whenever we see a lush green field it's so refreshing Greenery is very refreshing to our eyes. Then blue, very cool, emotional healing, inner peace. Purple enhances creativity, authority. And black, deep thinking, mystery and individuality. Uh, next slide, please. But actually, there is no general rule for colors. The individual's tradition upbringing, cultural background, these three uh, play a very important role in the choice of colors. For example, in the Western world, a bridal dress is always white. It's so beautiful. But in India, white is reserved for mourning. In previous days, widows were allowed to wear white only. In funerals, people wear white, whereas in Europe and in the Western world, people wear black. So you see, there is no general rule for colors, but definitely uh, some like green is definitely very, very refreshing and so on. We have two uh, mandalas here. One on the bottom left is just white and blue. The other one on the top right has more colors. So definitely by looking at these two, we'll have different feelings. So color does play an important role in our lives. Another thing is here, uh, not all drawings in this presentation are mine, though I have made many mandalas, but I have given them away as gifts to so many people. I don't have much of them left with me now. So wherever I have used one from the internet, I have given the source. The rest are my own drawings. Next, please. Ah, So here we see two mandalas and uh, the one on the left is drawn using petals and lines, whereas the one on the right is drawn using circles and lines. 
Now, uh, in online uh, seminars and workshops, I have seen that the pointer always doesn't work properly. So I have tried to explain it in a different manner. In the next slide, see, I have drawn, uh, next slide, please. Yeah, I have drawn colored circles over these mandalas. See, the, on, if you concentrate on the figure at the left, the innermost red circle clearly shows that there are eight petals. So this mandala has been drawn in using, uh, uh, has, the circle has been divided into eight equal segments. So there are eight petals in the innermost circle. Then as we move from the red to the yellow part, again, there are eight petals, but now, since the space is larger, the space in between the petals is filled with lines. Then if we look at the, the space between the yellow and the blue lines, blue circles, then the size of the petals have increased. And finally, in the outermost circle, you can see that first there are eight petals and then final one, there are 16 petals so and in the so this is how a mandala is drawn if we concentrate on the figure at the right see the innermost yellow circle just beyond that there are 20 circles 20 black dots so the circle is divided into 20 equal segments then each segment, then each dot is connected to the next circle by a straight line. And if you observe it closely, you will find that there are not 20 lines, but 40 lines. Because each dot and each gap in between the two dots, there is a straight line. So beyond the red circle, there are now 40 dots instead of 20. In this way, a mandala is increased. A mandala is drawn, starting from the innermost circle. And finally, the outermost circle can have a, any multiple of uh, 20 dots in this particular case. So next, please. What are the materials we need for this art? Paper, any type, cartridge, watercolor, ivory sheet. Then pencil, eraser, ruler, compass, protractor, because we have to divide the circle into equal segments. Then gel pens, colored pens, sketch pens, anything. And the surface paper or cloth. Now see how to draw these things. I think there is a video. Next, next slide, please. Ah. The five primary components of a mandala are its precise geometry, symmetry, color, number, and intention. So by combining these attributes consciously, mandalas bring about feelings of balance, harmony, and peace. And they're believed to transform and empower the spaces where they are kept and also the lives of people who view them. So next, please. Yeah, so here we have a video on how to draw some basic filler patterns. Can we have the video please? We start with round petals. Remember, each should be of the same size. Then a semicircle inside the round petal and just fill up the innermost semicircle. Then we can have again round petals we put a line and a dot inside. These are just long petals. Then we can have triangles, a smaller triangle inside, fill it up and a dot on top. Then we can have further round petals and just semicircles inside. These are spirals. 
then we can have small circles for filling up we can have bigger circles and a dot inside each we can have just normal petals so we saw that uh, next slide please but we must remember that each petal should be of the same size so it's very important so here are more filler patterns uh, i drew just a few of them but here there are many more and then these are very simple ones we can have a bit complicated ones also which gives a bold look to the mandala so let's have the next video well let's see how to draw more filler patterns we start with drop petals then two arcs then five straight lines on the top and just fill in the bottom most part then we can have more drop petals just a small arc and fill it up the second set of drop petals are thinner than the first set then we can have petals and then draw a double line close to the first line this gives a better look then we can draw two slanting lines arcs then circles the first one bigger second smaller and the last even smaller and then just fill in the part between the which is left the part which is left after drawing the circle and then fill up this last part so this gives a bolder look to the filler pattern the black shading gives a bolder look we can have more petals like this then a double line close to the first line two arcs and then round petals again two arcs then round petals and then we'll fill up the part which is in between the round petals and the arc see we are not filling up the round petals we are leaving them but we are filling up the space in between the round petals and the first arc we can draw another petal again a double line then two semi circles in the center then seven petals 1 2 3 4 5 6 then draw a small straight line inside each of the petals and then fill up the part which is in between the petal and the second uh line that we had the double line that we had drawn very close together and then also fill up the inside circle ways in which we can fill up the uh, mandalas and uh, i can show you even more uh, but since time is short i am just giving you the uh, slide so next slide please yeah so here we can see the one on the extreme left is the first step and final step is shown on the extreme right so this is how we create these beautiful patterns and the next slide will show you uh, many similar patterns which are used to fill up pandalas so now let's see how to draw we now know how to fill up the patterns so this shows a step by step 
drawing of how to draw mandalas. See the one on the first you see the figures, then I'll explain it them a bit. So the first figure, top left, that, that shows only concentric circles. And then we have drawn, uh, we have divided the mandala into eight equal segments. So a circle is 360 degree, 360 divided by eight is 45 degree. So with the help of a protractor, we have drawn 45, 90, 135, uh, 180 and so on degrees and then join them by straight lines very light drawings which we shall erase at the end these pencil marks will not remain once the mandala is complete then we start filling up with the filler patterns we sh saw just a short while ago we start filling them up so step by step the fourth figure you can see that the I have just filled up the space which is in between the circle and the petal. So in this way, we are increasing the number, the circles, and increasing the uh, patterns, uh, increasing the size of the mandala. And finally, the last one shows that we have drawn a drop petal at the periphery. So the next slide will give a uh, better view. This is how we start the drawing. This is the first step, drawing concentric circles. Then we start filling up the mandalas one by one. The first one is petals, you see. This is how it is developed. So hope you like it. Either you can leave the double line, the space between the double lines blank as seen here in some of the cases. In some other cases, I have filled up the space between the double lines by very thin, closely spaced lines. This is also one way to fill up mandalas, so depending on which filler patterns we are using. So now I think we know how to draw mandalas, basic ones. So the next slide, please. The first and foremost is to think how to draw the patterns uh, in the paper or cloth or whatever we are using. Here I'm showing two rectangular pieces. Uh, if it is a square, it's very easy to find the, uh, to uh, just fill up the square with circles. The center of the square and the center of the concentric circles will be the same. In case of a rectangle, if we just use circles, then a lot of space will be left blank. So how to judiciously use this space? So the picture on the left, you can see that I have drawn two uh, quarter circles uh, trying to cover up the entire rectangle. In the figure on the right, I have drawn a semicircular mandala in this, uh, on the left and two quarter circles on the top and bottom. This is just our own imagination, our own creativity. We just have to look them, uh, make them look beautiful and we need to relax our, ourselves also. So 
Next, please. Now, here are some examples of bookmarks. Uh, the one on the right is drawn on black paper using white gel pen. And uh, the one on the left on white paper, first I have just used some pink acrylic colors and then made the drawing using black uh, gel pen. And the uh, one on the center are very beautiful colored mandalas, which I downloaded from the internet. Next, please. Ah, so here are, there can be a lot of gift items using this mandala patterns. We can do them for our own relaxation and then give them to our friends and relatives who will be very pleased to get such personal gift items. So there is a notebook. There is a clock. There is a planter pot. I have made many planter pots, but unfortunately, I don't have any with me now. So I'm giving here one from the net. In the next slide, uh, yeah, there are. There's a perfume bottle, a couple of keychains, cushion covers. The list is endless. You can use your imagination to create anything. Ceramic plate, coffee mug. And uh, one minute, uh, for ceramics, uh, after completion, we need to bake them in the oven, in the convection mode. This fixes the color, and we can use them for our daily use. The color won't come out for ceramics. Next, please. Ah, these are mobile covers. Uh, the, the one on the left is a mobile cover, the black and white one. Uh, on the right is a leather purse. You can buy a leather wallet or a purse and just customize it yourself according to your own choice or gift it to somebody. It's very beautiful. Next, please. Ah, now we come to dot mandala art. We saw that mandala originated from Buddhism. Now, what about dot mandala? This is a ceramic a uh, flower vase which was lying in my house for I don't know how many years. So I just gave it a new look, that's all. Next, please. Ah, so how did this dot mandala art come into existence? Dot painting has existed since prehistoric times in Australian Aboriginal art. Actually, it has very deep hidden meaning and purpose. It's found in caves also. It's very beautiful. And mandalas are circles which represent the universe. So dot mandala is, has got nothing to do with Australian Aboriginal painting. It's just the blending of these art forms where we use these dots to create circular patterns. And these are very colorful and very beautiful. And the most important thing is, yeah, 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 second, please. Second, next slide, please. Yeah, it's growing in popularity day by day because it's very, very easy to perform. For mandalas, we saw that we need protractors and compass and everything. But here, we don't need any protractor, any compass, but yet we can draw highly, precisely symmetric patterns. No drawing skills are needed. Even a child can try this. Also, aged people with slight tremor in their hands can try these. It's a wide, it has a wide scope and very bright and very colorful. So, next slide, please. Uh, what are the materials needed? If you search the internet, you'll see that there are dot mandala tools are available, but actually, these are nothing. All you need is just flat surface, flat circular surface of different diameters. We can have earbuds, toothpick, matchstick, skewers, the back of a pencil, pen, paintbrush with a flat back, anything, and just acrylic colors. And any surface is good enough for dot mandala. Paper, cloth, glass, ceramics, stone, canvas, terracotta, leather, wood, 
even eggshells, shells on the beach, anything and everything. So we'll just see how to draw these patterns, circular patterns without any drawing skill, without the use of compass or protractor. Let's go to the next slide. I think there's a video now. Yeah, so just see. I have just for dot used... mandala, I have taken some acrylic colors and some dot making substances like a pipe, a brush, toothpick, matchstick, and an eggshell which I have painted black to hide the faults. And now with a with a matchstick, first I put a red dot at the center, then I put dots first top bottom then two sides and then the in between so you see we get a circle even without using a protractor or a compass and then with now we put dots of a bigger size but just each one above the red dot so it's automatically a circle and remember to use dots of different sizes and different colors that gives the beautiful effects in dot mandala. So I've used red, blue, white and see the upper one initially it was the a bigger white dot now we are putting smaller white dots this gives the look of a petal and thus we can keep on increasing the size so I put two big white uh, sorry yellow dots and then I shall use the fine point to put smaller dots see so our dot mandala we can go on increasing we can put this eggshell on the cap of an empty bottle using it as a stand we can make more designs over the top so this is a ready product. You can have your own. Without using protractor or compass, we get a very, very symmetric circular dot mandala. And you saw how easy it is to make such a dot mandala. And with such limited materials with whatever we have in our house an eggshell anybody's house has an eggshell <laughs> so next please yeah these are some of the bottles uh, glass bottles which i painted uh, then there is i think more next slide please ah uh, the one on the left is a paperweight uh, the center is a sauce bottle. On the right is an empty perfume bottle, which I finished yesterday only. I can use it as a paperweight. Uh, next, please. Yeah, here there are some ceramic plate, teapot, coffee mug. Next, please. Yeah. So on the left, we can see a shell. It's so beautifully painted. Then pebbles, pendant, eggshell. I just showed a very limited portion of how to, just to have an idea of how to draw these figures. And these are given just to give you an idea of how to complete the entire drawing. So next, please. These are canvas bags, 
and each though only dots are used to make these figures you can see that they are so very different and they can be so colorful next please so the, here these are leather bags these are just different examples passport holder mobile cover i can show you my mobile cover when i was waiting for indrani to log in i just made this mobile cover my own next please ah melamine tray coasters then next t-shirts cushion covers terracotta pots jewelry box only using dots next ah uh, the one on the left that was a gift from my elder daughter when she visited rajasthan it was just a yellow stone glass and she makes it a point to give me plain objects so that i can transform them with my paintings this is what i did and the one on the right is a teapot which was lying unused in our house for i think 3 decades i was about to throw it away when suddenly it struck me actually this is the first dot mandala that i did the one on the right so uh i hope people will feel inspired to try out these uh figures and get some relief from mental stress if possible so that brings me to the end of my presentation indrani this was wonderful i couldn't even the pace but it was wonderful it was colorful beautiful and it's i i can see you know how i am i'm glad you mentioned about carl jung and um you know we have been doing that and you shared an experience of um you know losing your dad i had similar experience last year i i lost my dad as well and uh, it was due to covid-19 all of a sudden and and i think that ever since then i have seen you know although you know it's not a kind of a um uh research that i have done but to put myself together i have used lots of colors you know every single day and that makes quite a big sense because you know for me as well like i couldn't visit the family and all of it and 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 therefore i had i needed something to hold on to and it was like you know those kind of things i was just um trying to show you see so these are the things i keep on oh, doing and i'm working at the same time i keep on doing you know something on the bottom of the uh, of the board or just coloring this but i think that yeah. these colors do have an impact on your yes. wellness and you know yes, of course yeah so it yeah. is beautiful but it's also a kind of workshop that people can so say for example lots of people have lost their jobs during yes. this time you know yes. It's and one and a half years very traumatic for most of us yes, everybody yes. has been affected in some way or the other yes most yeah most of us that's right yes and then how you were showing it it was so unique and i was thinking that you know anyone who is going through the video later on this is kind of a, although they are not in a physical space but i think the way the, that you presented it people will when they revisit the same video they will still be able to you know follow your patterns um stop it for a while <laughs> yes well i i tried it that way you know i revisited your wally painting and to be honest i've never ever tried that one and my my daughter who is 6 but uh, she loves painting as well you know she will paint everywhere um and and she liked it and she said well can we actually do something on oh, that so nice I yes. feel elated. He, yeah, it's it's kind of quite interesting, you know, how these kind of workshops actually inspire people across all different kinds of ages. Yes, that's true. Um, and if you remember David, uh, he basically yes, yes. 
who was there on the last yes, workshop, yes, of he sent me something as you were doing it. And then, of course, he, he was there, but uh, we suddenly left. So um, he wasn't able to share it with you. So I'm going to show you now. Uh, so that's one um, thing for you. And then I'll show mine as well. So David did it I with you on that day. Uh, he was behind the screen, but he was doing it. <laughs> I would love to see it. Yeah. Just give me a second. I'm just uploading it now. It's so interesting that I could at least inspire a small child. <laughs> it's very inspiring for me. Oh, it's I fantastic. Really, I, I feel honored. I think it will be wonderful because, uh, you know, even if we are doing these kind of workshops, because what I feel is that in this country, because um, during, uh, you know, during the winter season, particularly, people yeah, go it's through the sad. Disorder, yes. yes, yeah, they go through yes. the sad quite a lot. Yes. And it does impact, you know, here, particularly people work during the winter. And then in summer, they take a long off. Yes. To yes. rejuvenate yes. and you know, yes. connect to life. Okay, so this is the one I've managed to upload. Oh, so this, this is so nice. That. Yes, so David so nice. Hughes from our uh, ITMS, he did this paint uh, drawing the other day as he was also helping us coordinate it. It's and it's fantastic, nice. isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's really and he's nice. going to practice this. <laughs> he also said that I'm going to do it, and I didn't know that something of this sort exists. And here, you know, in, in, in school, uh, children are taught to use different kinds of geometric, um, you know, patterns. Uh, patterns to form human body and, you know, trees okay, and okay, all that. Yes, yes. He could easily link to that. And he said, wow, oh, this is it's so interesting. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting. So those are the kind of things. And then, of course, my daughter, she didn't um, draw anything, but she made something very similar to again you know just to when she was bored and and she gets something to do she oh, will kind of so beautiful so colorful so colorful yeah. using geometric shapes yes yeah, yes yeah. because they very, very colorful. Well, yes. what they will do is and then they will have these kind of things you know where they're making yes, faces yes 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 so i think it's, it's very very, very unique. beautiful and if we can do these kind of workshops with the children and with other people yes. as well, you know, a lot of people like myself will be very much interested. Uh, and academic life here is very stressful as well, you know. And so I think something that we can look forward to, this one is... To really release our stress. <laughs> really Actually, stressful. the world, the world over life has become very stressful. So if we could release it in some way or the other, it's very welcome. Isn't it so? That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll just quickly go and bring back mine just to show yeah, you. Of course. Of course not I would it. love to see it. Yeah, I'll bring it. So this is the one. Oh, this is wonderful. You made it. Yeah. It's looking it like a professional it. artist. Yeah. It's, no. it's <laughs> Not absolutely fun. professional. Yes. Yes, it's like very it? good. Yeah, of so I did it's it. Beautiful. Day. Very beautiful. And my daughter was sitting behind me, but I don't have the painting, so I just put it in a plastic bag, you know, just in case. And then she made this one. She got, oh. she said that, okay, I can't make that one. And she collected leaves and, oh, you know, she so used the leaves for the impressions. This is wonderful. Very, very beautiful. Particularly for a six-year-old child. It's, a, it's really beautiful. She, she not, likes doing uh, creative yeah. things. But I think it's good for, the, for, for, for children to kind of engage okay. in some form of art. Yes. Yes. They can't go out and play. At least in India, schools are still not open. So no. it's very difficult, it's very difficult. My mm. niece, she's 12 years old. So she's managing beautifully because she's really interested in art. So. That's right. Yes, yeah. And, and we, 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 we have also done the same thing, you know, collect anything, twigs to stones or anything, and then just color. But color does help you revive quite a lot. 
Yes, of yes. Course. We've got some comments coming in. So we have got a comment from uh, Dr. Orgo Shorkel, and he's saying wonderful presentation and demonstration on mandala art for stress relief. Thank you so much. Uh, and I think that it's it's really a beautiful one, and I think people can link, and they will. Lots of people have been actually. I mean, many people are actually at work as well. So what they will do is they will definitely yes, yes. use it. You know? Watch the videos later on. Yes. And it happened with the last last one as well. If, I don't know if you have seen it on the day. Possibly we had about fifty, but after that, it it crossed almost almost three hundred views. Oh, so I think yeah, yeah. It's, it's very, um, yeah inspiring for me <laughs> to go ahead awesome. to move that's ahead <laughs> so that's what i was saying to um Jain Tadar as well that you know um she's a you can see that she's a mathematical physicist from the presentation <laughs> from the drawings and you know from the measurements and some everything and how it's linked that so you know i can see that link then we uh, have what from sundar sahayatan that wonderful, very informative, just follow your mind in form of thoughts. That's a beautiful comment. Thank you. Thank you, Sunda. Um, then we have a comment from Alok Kaur. Wonderful indeed. Most clearly demonstrated how the possibilities um, the art form holds help the artist to express herself colorfully. Most enjoyable. Thank Wonderful. you. Thank you so much. Then we have got something from Kamla Patni as well saying beautiful. Um, well, Ashim Kumar Akshit um, saying wonderful presentation. Keep it up. Thank you. And of course, we've got some comments coming in from Manavutsa, which is saying wonderful. <laughs> Thank no, you so much. I really feel inspired to do to try out more. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think that we should, you know, I say to um John today as well, we were speaking the other day that I think in fact this um idea of workshop doing the workshop uh, when he was speaking to me that can we do something around winter? So absolutely, and we can have a test session now so that people can know what we are actually proposing. And then we can yeah. do it, you know, even if we are doing it as a digital workshop uh, and it, yes. it can it can help us to communicate. It can help us to talk and particularly the lived experiences that we all are going through, isn't it? We will, we will be able to share with you and, you know, yeah, it's, it's a very good building. Yeah. But thank you very because, much. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much. Actually, Dot Mandala is very, I think it's very easy to do. You don't need to have any drawing skills for that. Like this, this one, just which I did just now when I was waiting for you to log wow. in. See, this is so easy, but I didn't do anything, but it be turned out to be a complete semicircle. See, and then this portion was left behind this one. So I made one fourth of a circle. So we don't need any protractor to divide it into equal segments or a compass to do the circular pattern or anything. Just by putting the dots in the right place, top, bottom, then two sides, and then filling it up. So we can just, and then keep on increasing and then use our imagination to create different patterns. So yeah. one thing is we must use dots of different sizes and different colors to give it the vibrant look. And, by and how look think, yeah, sorry. Yes. So how do you think that? Uh, so say for example, if a person doesn't know how to uh, or have not done something and they are going to do it for the first time, do they need to actually visualize it in their head when they are? I think so. I think so. I think so. Hmm. He or she can make a rough sketch with the pencil on a piece of paper what the final outcome will look like. There must be some picture forming in the mind, no? Then only we can put the dots accordingly. For the yeah. first time, you can have a rough sketch with a pencil. Or you can even, on a piece of paper, you can use just colored sketch pens to do it. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, colored gel pens. That will give a, an idea of how the thing will come out to be. And then try it out. 
So. That's right, yeah. And sometimes, you know, when I'm taking notes also, like, um, although we have got highlighter pens, but I find it yes. very important when you use crayons, you know, because with crayons, yes, yes. a little pressure on your hand. Yes, yes. And, so uh, even a child can do it using crayons or using just any round object, just dipping it in acrylic color and putting a dot. Hmm. It's very easy for a child, isn't yeah. it? So. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So. Okay, so that brings us towards the end of this one. But I think that we are going to collaborate for many more on different Thank ones. Thank you and so much. Thank you. <laughs> club, uh, digital uh, painting club or drawing club, something like that, you know, we were thinking. And that would be wonderful if you can give us. I know you are busy, but you have managed no, to I would, time. So I would love much. to do it. I would love to, really love to do it. Thank you very much uh, Thank for your you. time Thank today. You so Thank much. you. Looking forward to it again. Me too. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks.